Welcome to another video. Let's take this integral that at first might look very daunting, but by the time you pay close attention to it, you're going to see that it is not as difficult as it appears because all you have to do is simplify this and rewrite it in a way that makes integration easy and sweet. Trying to work with arc sine of x to integrate might be a little daunting, but by the time we simplify and rewrite the expression, you're going to go, oh, that's so easy. That's what you should say every time you learn. Let's get into the video. So the first thing we're going to do for this integral is to rewrite the integrand because as I now I do not know how to deal with tan of arc sine of x. But there is a way I can rewrite this expression. I know that. Every time there is a composition of the tangent of an inverse trig function or cosine, the, the trig of an inverse trig function can always be rewritten in algebraic form. And this is what I mean. You see, look at this. Whenever you write an expression like tan of Let's write arc sine of x. You see, the tangent is all, always has an argument that is an angle. So you can say clearly that this is an angle, theta. We just don't know what theta is. But we know that we took the sine of theta. That's why we got x. So that's basically the meaning. You can go here and say that arc sine of x is equal to theta, right? That's, that's another way to write arc sine. So arc sine x is equal to theta, but what we want is not theta. We actually, we want theta, but we want to write theta in terms of x, not in terms of arc sine. But we don't know how to do that. We have to first free this guy. How do you free the argument of a trig function? You take the inverse of that trig function. So because this is the inverse trig, we're going to take the sine of both sides. So you're going to say the sine of inverse sine of x will be equal to the sine of theta. And based on what you know, inverse functions, they undo each other. So this guy is going to undo this guy and free x so that what you have on the right hand side is sine theta. So now we know that sine theta equals x. Now you see the journey I took you through? You can just straight up know. That is, if arc sine x is theta, then theta x is, arc, it's, is sine theta. Okay, but I like to always show this like this because there are times where it is not that obvious because the inside is complicated. Now, what do we do next? Go draw a triangle. Some people like using identities. I don't do it. I just go draw a triangle that shows me that sine theta is equal to x. So let's go here. I know that I have a right triangle. This is theta. In this triangle, sine theta equals x. Remember, this x is the same thing as x divided by 1. So that is my op opposite divided by hypotenuse. So my longest side is 1. The opposite side is x. I just need to find the third side. By Pythagorean theorem, I know that this is the square root of 1 squared minus x squared. I have all three sides. So now I can go back to this again. What exactly is this expression? Tan theta. What is tan theta from this triangle? Is opposite over adjacent, which is x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I can go back here and say that this is actually the integrand from 0 to 1 of, look, tan theta is x over square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's what I'm supposed to write here, x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. So this question could have been written this way. But it was written this way so you can understand that there is a relationship between angles, their inverse trig um, functions, and the x values. Okay, so now 
all we have to do is just integrate this. Well, it's easy. We know that the derivative of what is inside is going to be minus 2x, right? So that's just the linear form and there's nothing added so we can easily do a u substitution because we're going to have this inside the derivative of this. So by u substitution, we say let u be equal to 1 minus x squared. So we know that du is equal to, what is du? du is going to be um, negative 2x dx. But what I really want is x dx. So I'm going to move this two away. I'm going to divide this by negative 2. So I have negative 1 half du equals x dx. However, because this is a definite integral, I will have to also change the boundaries, right? So let me change the boundaries or the limits of integration as we say it. So when x equals 0, u evaluated at 0 will be, if you put 0 here, this is going to be 1. And then u evaluated at 1 is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 squared, that's 0. Okay, so it means we're going from 1 to 0 now. That's how we're going. So we're going to change the whole integration so that this becomes the integral from... So where it was 0 before, it's now 1. Where it was 1, it's 0. So it's going to be from 1 to 0 of x. Not x anymore. Remember, we said we're going to replace x dx with this. So I'm going to replace x dx with negative 1 half to u negative one half du and what's under is going to be the square root of u this is our u now so that's going to be the square root of u nice now that we have something different we know that we usually integrate from the lower limits to the upper limit so we're going to switch this and change the sign it becomes a minus but that minus is going to change this minus to a plus so we become happy again we go from zero to one and this is one half, I can pull that one half to the back, you know, and then what do we have? We have just um, one over the square root of u du. Um, I know that I cannot plug in zero here. This function is not defined at one of the boundaries. One is okay, but zero is not. So we say this integral is an improper integral. Okay, now, Anytime you have an improper integral, you have to take that point that makes it improper and not plug it in. You can't just do the integration. You have to write this integral as a limit. So this is what happens. We know this is improper. So what we say that this is equal to one half times the limit as, I'm, I always like using capital R, as R goes to zero of the integral from r to 1. So I didn't change the top one, I just changed the bottom one of 1 over the square root of u. I'm going to write 1 over the square root of u as u to the negative 1 half du. So now I can integrate this easily, and I know when I integrate this, it's going to be, I'm going to add 1 half to this and divide it by 1 half, which is the same thing as 2 times the square root of u. That's what comes out of this. So this is the same thing as 1 half multiplied by the limit as r goes to 0 of 2 times the square root of u evaluated from r to 1. Now this 2 can cancel out this 2 so that what I have really is the limit as r goes to 0 of, I'm going to plug in these two values, so it's going to be the square root of 1 minus the square root of r. Well, that's it. And the square root of 1 is 1, and as r goes to 0, this goes to 0. So our final answer is just 1. That was a quick fix. <laughs> Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.